Okay, this is Rob, and uh, this is the first video about Quartz Composer. Um, to start Quartz Composer, I just kind of, I just recommend going to Spotlight and typing Quartz Composer. This is what it'll probably look like. We can get this library window out of the way for now. Uh, we'll see the template chooser first. All of these templates are mostly useless for us. I think uh, mo normally we'll start with basic composition. Uh, there are other ones that might be helpful, maybe graphic animation. Graphic transition allows you to create a transition like you'd see between images in a slideshow in iPhoto. Um, image filter might be a, uh, a filter that you'd see in Photo Booth. Uh, music visualizer are the iTunes visualizers, and uh, you can make a screensaver and so on. So this gives you an idea of all that stuff that you see in Mac OS is designed using uh, Quartz Composer. I have another video that kind of says where to download Quartz Composer and what Quartz Composer is. That So I'm assuming you know that stuff already. In this video, I'm going to show you uh, how to start Quartz Composer, what the interface looks like and a little bit about each of the parts of the interface. So I'm just going to click uh, basic composition and choose that. So the interface looks like this. We have an editor window and a viewer window. This is, the viewer window is updated live, so any changes I make in my program, what we'd call a program in most uh, tools like this, we call a composition in Quartz Composer. So as I make changes to my composition, they appear uh, in real time in the viewer. One thing about the viewer is that I'd recommend if you plan on uh, using this to create, let's say, a video, a 720p video that's going to be uh, become maybe a bumper or an intro to some other video, or um, if you're uh, planning on using this in a video installation and uh, you know that it's going to be uh, 1024 by 768, which is four by three aspect ratio, whichever it is, four by three, 16 by nine, which would be HD, uh, I would suggest choosing that as the, the starting point. Now, if I choose 16 by nine, I can resize the window and it'll still remain 16 by nine. I can also choose a specific size uh, by selecting custom, but generally I think the best thing to do is just start off with the right aspect ratio. Uh, that might become clear later, but right now it's just kind of a recommendation. Um, you can see in the viewer there are all these options. You can hit stop, so anything you do in the editor is not being affected here or uh, reflected in the viewer, uh, but normally we just leave it running. You can hit full screen to show uh, the, the composition in the entire screen. I can hit escape to, um, to bring me back. Uh, there are different rendering modes, and these will come in handy as we go along, but it's worth knowing that the normal one is on the left. Uh, there's an interactive mode, which allows you to manipulate um, objects on the canvas uh, without manually typing in their locations in the editor. Uh, debug is really handy. You can see what parts of your composition are most active. If, uh, if you click uh, this rendering mode, you'll see some error messages or warnings down at the bottom, and also uh, your, the, the uh, patches, which we haven't talked about yet, these will flash red as they're being active, so this is good for debugging. Um, what is this mode? I don't even know what this mode is. Profile mode. I think this is, uh, once we, if we ever got to the point where we're trying to, um, to improve the performance, which I don't think we'll ever arrive at um, as a beginner in Quartz Composer. So generally it's those first three that'll, that'll be worth looking at. Uh, we can switch back to the editor using that button and we can switch back to the viewer. So this is how we go back and forth. Uh, so now um, this is the editor window and we've got some zoom options here. Uh, Generally, you know, you can you can change the title this uh, toolbar just like you can in any Mac application. But generally, the things that'll be most useful are being able to jump back to the viewer, uh, looking at the patch inspector and parameters, and the patch library, uh, and of course, zooming. So I'll show you how that all that works right now. These are patches, and uh, I'll talk more about patches in the next video and uh, how they why they look the way they do and the differences between them but uh, it's worth knowing that the patches come from the patch library. So I can click here, and here's a list of all of the available patches. You can imagine that something like uh, maybe video input would allow me to get video input from the camera. So um, clear actually uh, decides what the background color of my um, canvas here is, and so on. There's lots of different stuff, lots of different uh, patches that we'll use to piece together and make a functioning composition. 
So I can just click any of these and uh, hit delete. Um, what you'll see pretty soon, actually I'll undo that. What you'll see pretty soon is that, um, if I can just give you an example here, billboard is another popular uh, patch. I make connections between these patches uh, by drawing these noodles between them. So here's me in the uh, as a video input being connected to a billboard. I'll explain what that means in the next video, but you can see how they connect and disconnect using uh, using the mouse. If you look here, actually, if you hover over any of these ports, you can see what data is actually traveling over the noodle. And um, I'll again explain that more about that later. Um, the other things that are worth knowing are, uh, you know, I think there's a, I'll, I'll kind of give you a set of starting points to, to go with. Um, of course, you can explore around in here, but I would say if you're looking at any of these that say core image filters, um, they're, they're maybe not, you know, they really look exciting, but in the beginning, I think it's best to stick with the basic ones. So some of these that really seem <clears throat> exciting, like page curl or uh, photocopy, I think this is another, uh, maybe not. There's, there's, you know, pop art. So a lot of these are kind of ready-made um, patches that allow you to take a, uh, an image and apply some filter to it. So this is kind of the equivalent of Photoshop filters. Uh, and, and for us, they're not so useful at this point. What we're interested in is more constructing some, some uh, visuals from scratch. So I'll give you some starting points. Generally, if you see one in here that looks pretty amazing, like psychedelic, uh, it could be that it's, it's really useful for a specific thing like a, uh, an image filter or something like that. But um, of course, you can give anything uh, a try out of there. So um, generally, I, I, you know, I will show you uh, that parameters and patch inspector are very important features of the editor, and I'll talk about that in the next video. But uh, for right now, at least you know how to open uh, the editor and the viewer. And of course, there's um, there are some menu options here that duplicate what's in the toolbars. And the last thing I would say is uh, under preferences, there are options for the editor and the viewer. There's also a secret uh, way to open uh, magic preferences. If you hold down the option key before hitting preferences, uh, I totally lied. Command? No. <laughs> mm, all right, I'll get back to you on that. <laughs> there's, a, uh, there's a secret way of getting more preferences, but um, I think right now, it doesn't like me. So that's okay, you'd probably get yourself in trouble anyway. So that's it, um, that's the interface, and next I'll talk about uh, how to connect these uh, patches in meaningful ways.